have a variety of projects that work well for ages 5 to 105. I do not divide my students into younger and older, but more I divide them into beginner and advanced. Doesn't matter what age you are, your first experience you always appreciate an easier first time. I can teach the same project easier or hard to a 5-year-old or a 15-year-old. The final outcome is always the same. The artist always rises to their level of experience. Here I can show you. This is a mask my son made when he was 6. And this is a mask that my son made when he was 11. I taught the same, but his experience was more advanced. He had more thought and more feeling to put into this mask. The same thing with my fish project. I have this fish project that was made by a beginner. But then I have this fish project that was made by a more advanced older student. I believe this student was in middle school. Here's my cat bird feeder project. See, you put the bird seed inside the cat's mouth for the birds. This is a beginner. And again, this is a teenager or an advanced. They had taken several classes from me. So I'm getting ready to show you about 25 projects. We're going to begin with the slab projects. Let's get busy. We're going to start off with slab projects, then we'll move to the pinch pot and then eventually coil projects. I always use a paper product for every project, whether it's a chinette paper product to help shape the project or just a cheap paper plate to help carry the project from the working area to the painting area. I'm going to go through several projects quickly. The first one we're going to make is the plate project. You start off with a large amount of clay. I can get 12 plates out of a 25 pound bag of clay. This is going to begin a lot like the mask workshop. Every slab project that I do, I start off with that one, two, three. Just to let you know, it's not just for the fun, but it helps get all your students back to the same place. As you pass out the mats and pass out the clay, you don't want half your students banging on their clay, making it flat, while the other half don't even have their clay round. So even though it's a class management tool, we disguise it in the form of fun. So here we go. We've got the big ball of clay. We're going to put it in the middle of the mat. And it's getting ready to be one, two, three time. Ready? One, two, three. And again, we leave it thick as an Oreo cookie. I only have two rules when my students make things out of clay. Thick as an Oreo cookie, not a double stuff, and also always put the two pieces of clay together, attach them with clay glue, which is the wet toothbrush. If your students follow those two rules, everything that they make will go through the kiln firing process easily and they will last forever. Now your younger artist is going to have a hard time with this much clay making it into a plate so I always give them what I call the clay lady whammy. Here lately I've been calling it the clay lady shortcut. You can pick up the clay and with the motion you can pull the clay to the mat and it will spread out and here we go. You might want to practice this once or twice before you try it with your students. A lot of times an adult, when they first start, they'll try to whammy it and it'll bend in half. That's because they're trying to throw it straight down and you want to pull it away to help stretch the clay out. After you have your slab, this is a lot like the mask project in that we make a plate, clay with a smooth side showing, and another plate. This time both plates are right side up. Then take the tool, hold it straight up and down and run it around the edge of the plate. Be sure and hold that tool straight up and down to give your plate a nice smooth edge. Take your top plate off and now we have a clay plate. We're going to leave the clay plate on the bottom paper plate just like the mask to help carry it around and help for it to dry in a nice plate shape. Do note you have to use chinette plates. A wax coated plate or a styrofoam plate will not work. Chinette works because just like the mat, it will absorb some of the water and leave the clay loose so that it will pop out. A styrofoam plate will adhere to the clay and when the plate dries there will start being some cracking. Same with a wax coated plate. So do know Chinette's the brand. So we're going to kind of pat around the edges to make it nice and smooth and we can leave it just as a plate. This is really good for your beginning artist because there's not much three-dimensional to this and a beginner artist will be very comfortable with the painting because they're used to painting on paper and you can get a nice quality project where it's still clay but they've painted on. With a slight modification we can turn this into a pumpkin plate. This is a great project around September and October. Just take the finger and pull it down at the top and then you can take a little bit of the scrap clay roll it into a round ball and then roll it back and forth just enough to make a nice 
little stem for the pumpkin. A little bit of clay glue. Scratch the surface till it's slimy. Stick it on here. You can leave it just with this little stem or if you want to make a pumpkin leaf, there are two different ways of making a leaf. You can make a round ball, make it flat, and then make what I call a canoe. Just kind of pinch it on the sides. But that's not really a pumpkin leaf. The best way to make a pumpkin leaf, a round ball, make it flat, and then you pinch it into the star because that's really the shape of a pumpkin leaf. And then you can clay glue that right on the edge as well. They can paint the whole project orange, put the stripes in. Now's a good time for you to mention the difference between a pumpkin and a jack-o'-lantern because a jack-o'-lantern will have a face. And so you need to be sure and make that distinction for your artist. Now we can do the same type of thing for a Christmas project. Let's say we've made that plate. But instead of making the plates right side up, it's like the mask. We've made them inverted. We're going to take the top paper plate off, and then you can take a cup. I use the larger cups, turn it upside down, find the middle of your wreath, and push in. This will not work like a cookie cutter. You can't push it all the way through the clay. But what it does is it makes a perfect round line for you to follow with your tool. Holding the tool straight up and down, cut all the way through the plate, down to the paper plate, pull this out and then we have a wreath and I can show you how to make a bow with the circle out of the middle. I have a little story. Are you ready? First we make a duck mouth. Then we tell that duck shh and then we tell that duck open up your ears and look at that. I've got a bow. Now when we put our bow on here we won't paint the bow because then it will be white after it's fired. A really nice way of painting on the wreath is to paint it green, but instead of using a paintbrush, we're going to use a toothbrush. Put the toothbrush in the green, bang the extra off, and then you just go up and down and up and down on the clay. Look at that. That makes texture as well as green all at the same time. You can dip the toothbrush again and just keep on going all the way around the wreath. Well, if you have a little bit of gray showing through, that'll be okay because that gray will turn white after it fires and it'll look like snow on the wreath. The neat thing about painting with the clay paint, clay paint's made out of watery clay, right? What's clay glue? Watery clay. So when it's time to put the bow on, we can just push the bow into the green clay paint and then it will stick. You obviously would paint the entire wreath. And if you do have a little bit of red clay, I'll roll those up into peanut M&M shapes and push them into the clay to make little red berries. We can also make a number of projects with a dessert size chinette plate. If you make just an ordinary plate, you can use this for a good handprint plate. I also will give you a hint on handprint plates. Instead of painting the hand, if you just put a little bit of paint in a paper plate and have the child put their hand in the plate and then put it on the clay, it's just enough clay paint to make a perfect handprint. Now we can also make a picture frame out of the round plate. It's going to be a lot like the Christmas wreath in that you invert the plate upside down, clay, the other plate on top of that. Oh look, that was a mask plate. I do recycle. Then we're going to take the tool, we're going to cut all the way around the edge like this, get the extra off, roll that into a ball, take the top paper plate off. We're not going to use a large cup, we're going to use a smaller cup. This is the five ounce. Turn it upside down, push it in, again not like a cookie cutter. We can pull this around, put this with the scraps, and then you can send your students to the texture station. When I do the picture frame, I have a texture station, then they do the clay lady check, and then the painting station. Texture tools can be made out of a variety of things. These are some texture tools that I made just out of clay. You don't paint them or glaze them, but you make them out of clay and then you can fire them in the kiln one time and they make a perfect texture tool. I also have a bucket of a whole bunch of different things. I call it my junk drawer because everything that doesn't have a place goes into this bucket and you can get some incredible texture tools out of just everyday household items. You can teach your students about pattern. That's when you make the same thing over and over again. Or you can teach them just to do one of everything that they really like. The texture tools are a really nice way of decorating your picture frame. You can also bring in the study that in Japan the artists there do not sign their work. They have their own personal stamp and they stamp into the clay. You can have your students make their own texture tools and make their own stamps just by taking a little piece of clay, rolling it into a hot dog, and then finding different ways of putting textures on the end. One firing in the kiln, you've got a whole bucket of texture tools. Now another kind of picture frame that you can make, let's say that when we made this picture frame, we did not invert the plates, but they were right side up. 
Take the cup, push it in, pull the circle out, and then we can make a heart. You pull the top down, you push the bottom in, and then you have a perfect little heart frame. I do a lot of these at Valentine's Day. And you can have the student make their little thumbprints all around the edge for a personalized touch. Moms always like the little thumbprints. At the Clay Lady Check, I hide a little hole right here so that it can be hung up after it's fired in the kiln. And then I write their name on the back. The heart picture frame is a really nice project. Simple, but nice for family's gifts. Thank you.